What's up my AP Pre-Calc students? In this video, we are going to cover question number two from the 2025 AP Pre-Calculus Free Response Exam. Full solutions, everything explained as best as possible. But before we begin, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. All right, here is the question. So a musician releases a new song on a streaming service, and a streaming service is an online entertainment service. Like you guys even told what that is. Well, anyway, after several months of play, the musician uses an app at time equals zero that counts the total number of plays for the song since its release. A play is a single stream of the song on the streaming service. The table below gives the number of plays in thousands in selected times. So at zero months, it was 25,000 songs, two months, 30,000 songs, four months, 34,000 songs. The total number of plays in thousands for the song since its release can be modeled with a quadratic equation, a t squared plus b t plus c, where d of t is the total number of plays in thousands and t is the number of months that it's been on the app. All right, so let's dive into the question. So part a, part one says use the given data to write three equations that can be used to find the values for a, b, and c. So we basically were given three points, and we want to turn those three points into three equations using the model. So the model was at squared plus bt plus c. So all we have to do is plug in zero, and we know the output was 25. Plug in two, we know the output was 30. Plug in four, we know the output is 34. Now you could certainly leave this as your answer. Those are three equations right there that all could be used to find a, b, and c. But we could also do a little bit of math. For example, we know that the a and the b are going to turn into zero when we do... Uh, that first equation, so we just get 25 equals c, 2 squared is 4, and then we could simplify that second equation to 30 equals 4a plus 2b plus c, and then we also know 4 squared is 16, so we could also simplify that bottom equation as well. Either one of those are going to suffice to creating three equations that have those three unknowns. All right, the second part of a says, all right, let's use those equations to now actually find the a, b, and c values. Now, I've got to be honest, you could do substitution method, you could do all kinds of different methods, but the easiest method is to use your calculator regression analysis. All we got to do is enter that data into our calculator. We have to enter the 0, the 2, and the 4, and then the outputs of 25, 30, and 34, and then we get our A and B values. That's exactly what I did. I just used my T84 calculator, but you could also do regression analysis in Desmos and on the Numworks. Regardless, really simple, you don't have to show any work here. We get A equals negative 0.125 b equals 2.75, and c equals 25. Now, they only asked us to find a, b, and c, but I went ahead and actually plugged them into the model to get our final equation. Nice and simple. All right, part b, or section b, has three parts. Part one says use the given data to find the average rate of change of the total number of plays for the song in thousands per month from zero to four. And they want us to express our answer as a decimal approximation and show all of our work. So basically, we're finding the rate of change or the average rate of change between these two points. So here's my work. It's really straightforward. I got two points, 0, 25, and the second point is 4, 34. We know that it's the outputs divided by the inputs. That's how you find average rate of change. So that's 34 minus 25 is 9. In the denominator, we have the inputs, 4 minus 0, and we get 4. 9 divided by 4 is 2.25. It did want us to express that as a decimal, so definitely want that 2.25 there. And then I wrote that the average rate of change is 2.25 thousand total plays of the song per month after release. Not too bad there at all. Pretty straightforward. All right, part two of section B says let's use the average rate of change found in part B to estimate the total number of plays of the song at 1.5 months. And they want us to show our work here. So here is my kind of thinking here. Hopefully this thinking makes sense. Or hopefully your teacher went over this with you in class. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the linear equation of the secant line that connects these two points. We could then use the secant line equation to estimate the number of total plays at 1.5 months. So here is that actual little graph. I made a graph in Desmos of the model, and we actually see these two points. And what I want to do is find the equation of the secant line. Sorry for my bad drawing here that connects those. Terrible drawing. You get the point, though, connecting those two lines. Now, that's pretty easy to do. We already know the slope is 2.25. And then we could just use one of the points. So I actually showed it both ways here. You don't have to do it twice. You only have to do it once. But I did it twice using the point of 0, 25, and then the other point of 4, 34. So basically, if we use the first one, we're starting at 25. That was the value at 0. And then we're adding our slope of 2.25 times the 1.5 minus 0. And I got 28.375. I could do it the other way as well, where I start at 34, but this time I have to go down because 1.5 minus 4 is that negative 2.5. That's the distance between 4 and 1.5. So 
So 2.25 is the slope or the average rate of change, and I'm going to change that by the 1.5 minus 4, and I still get 28.375. So either way, shake it out, we get approximately 29,000 plays of the song after 1.5 months of being released. So not too bad there. There are a couple other different ways that you could end with that answer. Um, so as long as you get that, and as long as you're showing your work and you get the 28.375, and then we say approximately 30, 29,000 songs, um, pretty simple there, not overly difficult. You could even actually turn that into 28,375 songs uh, or plays of the song if you wanna be a little bit more specific. I did round to 29. But honestly, if you said 28,375, because that is in thousands, that'd probably be a little bit better answer. All right, and moving on to the third part of part B, it says, let A sub T represent the estimate of the total number of plays of the song in thousands using the average rate of change. It can be shown that for A of 1.5, it's less than the model predicts at 1.5. Explain why in general, this is always gonna be true. The average rate of change is gonna be less than the model for all values between zero and four, your explanation should include a reference to the graph. So you know what I did? I went ahead and made a graph. So here is that graph, and here are those two points. Remember, connecting those two points is the average rate change. And your graph does not have to be this perfect if you put a graph on your paper. You can just make a really rough sketch of this to kind of understand the concept. Then what I did is I actually kind of zoomed in a little bit here because this is what's gonna be the key to the question. We can actually see between zero and four, the secant line is below the red model. So this is exactly what they want us to show is that the model is going to be above any prediction from that secant line because in that region from zero to four, the model is concave down and the secant line is perfectly straight, obviously. And that's what's gonna create that value where the, the model is gonna be higher. So here's how I wrote that final answer up. But it did want me to reference the graph, which I kind of did there by making some graphs. And here I go now. The estimate for A sub T is the Y coordinate of a point on the secant line that passes through 0, 25 and 4, 34. Because the graph of D is concave down over the interval 0 to 4, which we saw in the picture, the secant line is going to be below the graph of D on the interval 0 to 4. Therefore, any estimate using A sub T is going to be less than the value from the model D for all t on that interval zero to four. So that's a really good explanation that's referencing the graph, talking about it being concave down. And then I also had those quick pictures there that really kind of hit it home. So hopefully that makes sense as well. All right, in the final section of question two, it says the quadratic function model D has exactly one absolute min or absolute max. Yes, of course, all quadratics do. That min or max can be used to determine the domain restriction for D. Based on the context of the problem, explain how that min or max can be used to determine the boundary for the domain of D. So the first thing I did was went back to that graph I made in Desmos, and I found the max, because I clearly needed to identify that it was a max, and that max was at 11,40.125. Now, that's going to help me understand the domain. The domain restriction is going to be 0 to 11. You might be like, well, wait a minute, why can't it go more than 11? Here's where we got to really understand the context of the problem. The output of the model is the total number of plays of the song. And the total number of plays of the song will increase, right? It's going to continue to get bigger, but it will never get negative. So this section of the, the graph that's going down can actually not happen. You might be like, well, yeah, the, the, the song, uh, less plays of the song. Yes, the song, but that's what you're not understanding. The output is the total number of plays. So maybe eventually there are less plays of the song, but if we're representing the total number of plays as the months go by, it's always going to be increasing. Now, maybe eventually nobody listens to the song anymore and it does just completely stop and it doesn't go up because there's no more plays in the song, but it's never going to go down. The total number of plays cannot go down. And that's exactly what I wrote here. The domain restriction for the model D of T is the interval zero to 11. D of T represents the total number of songs played after release. The total cannot decrease. It can stay at 40.125 thousand plays, but it cannot go down since it's a total number of plays. Plays of the song cannot be taken away. Once it's played, it has been played. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'm sure a lot of students might have, might have messed that up, but be very careful understanding that the output is not you know, how many times the song has been played or anything like that. At that given moment, it's the total number of plays. All right, that's it for question two. Hopefully you guys did really, really well on it, or at least you got enough points. Maybe you didn't get all of them, but you did pretty, really well. 
And again, really good question, and a lot of it can be done on your calculator.